Welcome to Go After Dark. This is a new web series where we take a look at Go from a different perspective. In this series, we drop everything about Go routers, REST, containers, databases, and all the boring stuff of everyday Go. Instead, we'll have fun recreating demo effect from the 90s. We will mainly focus on graphical effects, but over time we may dive into other topics. I will start with the very basics, so everybody should be able to join. Let's take a look at a simple framework I put together to display our effect. This is intended to be very simple and allow us to test our graphic effects quickly. There are two main parts, initialization and frame drawing. The initialization is uh, simply there to load the data we need to prepare everything. We want our first frame to be drawn as fast as the rest, so we load any resources and prepare all data we need there. The drawing part provides a timestamp of the frame we want rendered. To keep it simple, the time will increase from 0 to 1. This is an easy way to deal with nonlinear effects, meaning we can draw images in any order we like. Some effects in the future may depend on data from the previous frame, but for now we'll not deal with those. We return an image that should be displayed for the supplied time t. The first effect we do will be really simple. We simply display an image on screen and move it around a bit. Let's look at the code. In our initialization, we load an image with a palette. This is abstracted a bit since WebAssembly cannot access the file system directly. And it also asserts that the type of image is what we expect. Since this is not our day job, we just blow up on errors. A palette image is an image uh, with a reduced number of colors up to 256. This means that each pixel is represented by a single byte and the palette then performs the translation from the value to color. This means as long as you copy the values, the color is preserved. You may wonder why we don't just accept any type of image. For real-time effects, we need to access the pixels by the value and the interfaces are generally too slow for this. Secondly, we create a drawing surface with the same palette as the input. We also create a slice with each line of the output image. An image is defined as having a width and a height in pixels. The pixel values are stored in a slice where there's dried indices between each line. Since we're dealing with one byte per pixel, the stride is a number of bytes between each line. Note that there are two main ways of referring to coordinates in an image. The most common is where 00, zero is at the top left corner of the image, but you may also encounter that 00, zero is at the bottom left. I have only encountered x to be 0 at the left side of the image, so usually that's safe to assume. The reason the stride may be different from the width of your image is twofold. First of all, it allows you to crop the width of the image without having to copy all the data. And secondly, it may be aligned to a specific width to help assembler, specifically SIMD, which operates on more than one byte at the time. Let's look at the rendering loop. The first thing we do is create an offset based on the time value. Secondly, we clear the screen. We set it to the color at index zero, but it could easily be another color. Next, we store the width and the height of the source image, so we have them handy. Next, we loop over the output image where we want to write. The offset determines the position on the destination, and we end when we've drawn the entire image. 
The next step is to align the source and destination slices. Again, we offset the destination by the offset, so the leftmost pixel will be written there. The final thing we do is simply copy from the source to the destination. A thing you'll notice is that we're moving operations as far out of the loops as possible. Usually you divide performance into per pixel, per line, per frame operations. Where you can do more expensive operations, the further out you get. Let's look at the effect. Yeah, it's a bit underwhelming. The framework gives you some information. The first thing we have is a time t. Secondly, we have the real FPS, which is pretty much 60 FPS. The last is virtual FPS. This is a value that shows the quote virtual speed of your effect. The framework simply measures the time it takes to render a frame and uses that to extrapolate a theoretical FPS based on only that time. Let's try to optimize this. If we change the for loop to a copy, let's see how that affects our virtual FPS. We're running it, and now we have almost tripled our virtual frame rate. You're welcome to go and ask the Go developers why there's that much of a difference, but for now it is what it is. So why is the real frame rate at 60 FPS? This is because we're rendering with VSync. This means the updates are synchronized to our display and we only display a new image when a screen updates. But the observer of you might object that it doesn't look like 60 frames per second and you're right. We can pause the effects by pressing space and advance a 60th of a second by using the arrow keys. So looking at it, we can clearly see that we can change the time, but that doesn't always update the picture. If we go back to our code, we see that this is a cast to an integer between 0 and 100 for the offset. Currently, the smallest unit we can place an image at is with single pixel precision. There's no easy solution for that, but we'll come back to it in a later episode. So for now, the only way to fix it is to make our image move faster. Let's see how that looks. Well, it does look a bit more smooth. Not great, but hey, let's, uh, let's keep this for, uh, for today. Thank you for watching the first episode of Go After Dark. You can visit uh, afterdark.klauspost.com and find links to the code and see it running in your browser with WebAssembly. Be sure to subscribe and enable those notifications or follow me on Twitter to get notified when new episodes are out. Feel free to share your own creations on Twitter with the hashtag GoAfterDark. Thank you for your time and good night. <laughs>